welcome to Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. I'm your host, and on this show, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we'll be breaking down all of the day's movie news and going over what it means for the production in general, such as casting decisions, trailer announcements, director announcements, things like that. So, without any further ado, let's get started with today's Hot Topics. And the first topic we have to talk about today is a brand new trailer has been released for David Fincher's upcoming film, Gone Girl. Now, judging from the initial trailer, he's done this with the last several films that he's uh, that he's made. With Social Network, with Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, and now with this film. The teaser trailer is set juxtaposed to a more or less relevant song, or, or song that plays to what the theme of the film is going to be but it's juxtaposed like you had a very somber version of the song creep for the tra uh, teaser trailer for the social network and then for um girl with the dragon tattoo it was um um oh it was the the, the hard rock band i can't oh, i can't remember the name of the band um but they had their song play uh and now with this one they had another one with the teaser trailer the theatrical trailer went a different route and it it really delves in to what the movie is going to be about. So the ascent, the the basic premise of this movie is uh, Ben Affleck's character uh, Nick Flynn, who is quote unquote happily married with his wife. Um, she goes missing on their five year wedding anniversary, and he's a very public face. Like he uh, he it gets a lot of notoriety, it gets a lot of uh, a lot of media attention, and looks to be throughout the course of the story all the, the fingers are being pointed towards him and it's really unclear like, this is a mystery the classic version of a mystery and David Fincher is perfectly at home in a film like this because you don't quite know whether or not he actually did it if a lot of the things that he is saying actually happened if potentially we're dealing with a split personality I haven't read the book that it's based off of so I am I am in the dark I am just speculating on this um, but you really do get a sense of certain things like that like the the unsettling feeling you get when he's standing next to that photograph uh, the the my wife is missing picture and they're taking his photograph along with it and he smiles like he's standing there like this and then he goes you know and he smiles and it, and it's just it's unsettling because you don't know if he's just naive to the situation at that moment um, if he's looking at it more so that he's getting like people are seeing him, he's getting the spotlight. Um, you really don't know from that, but the mood and everything from this trailer, it's classic Fincher. I mean, it's classic Fincher no matter which way you look at it. And it, it really harkens back to movies that he's done like Seven and Zodiac, where it's a very, very procedural mystery where you're really trying to figure out exactly what has gone down. Um, and it, but it, this time, instead of dealing with the police, at least as the, the focal point, uh, the main... Um, the main character that the movie is looking at is the actual prime suspect, which I think is a very unique viewpoint to have, and I think this movie's really going to hit on all cylinders. I mean, the book is beloved. It's a, it's obviously it's a best-selling book, or else they wouldn't have made it. But just looking at the tone, and oh, I, I need to pause here and just talk about Neil Patrick Harris. I mean, he has he's doing a rare dramatic turn in this film, and he looks creepy. He looks creepy as all hell in this trailer and he, he's only in it for a very minor minor moment and um, from what I understand about the story his character does play an integral role in the overall film um, I don't know exactly what that is I'm trying to not figure out too much of the stuff I rewatched the trailer a couple of times just to get a good sense of it but I started to pick up on plot details and, and the way that the movie looks like it's going to unfold even though it's very very well constructed in that it's not a linear trailer. It's not showing you from the beginning all the way to the end. Uh, it is showing you bits throughout. Um, so I'm I'm very excited for this trailer. I mean, it's a Fincher film. I could not be... I, I There's not a, a filmmaker out there, as it stands right now, that I respect more than David Fincher. I respect him more than I respect Christopher Nolan. And the reason being is that Fincher, even though all of his movies have a visual sense that you can tell that is his, all the movies are different or at least most of them are different whereas with Nolan's films I feel that they all they all feel the same they feel like a, a Nolan film um, you don't really you know what you're getting when you get a Nolan film with Fincher you visually know what you're getting you know you're gonna get a hard-hitting story but everything that's in the middle of it the, the, the beef of it if it were 
you, you have no idea. You don't know exactly what you're going to get. Because, I mean, look at the last <clears throat> look at the last couple of films that he's done. Um, um, Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Zodiac. Um, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. Social Network. I mean, all of these movies are different. But yet they visually feel like a Fincher film. There's all those classic Fincher techniques that he puts in there. And obviously the, the lighting and color grading. I mean, they're, they're just... <sighs> I, I am... There's nothing more I can talk about this movie because I'm going to start overanalyzing it. And I don't want that to happen because I want to be fresh when going into the film. But I put a link for the trailer in the description of this video. So if you guys have not seen it yet, definitely check it out. Because it's uh, the you can see in the trailer the mystery that's unfolding. The fact that we don't know as an audience exactly what's going on. And I feel that trailers a lot of the time do give that away. Um, this one I felt it didn't. Even though it did give a lot of the story away. But because it is all over the place you can't pinpoint down where things are gonna happen um, a lot of what we've seen could come from the first half you know we just we do not know so I, I'm very excited for this film I am I am very much looking forward to it the only downside that I have with this is that David Fincher chose to do a story like this rather than continue on with his 20,000 leagues under the sea I really want to see a big budget Fincher film we have not seen that yet we have not seen his take on uh, not necessarily a superhero movie, but we haven't really seen him do an action film. And I want to see him do an action film because I think he could really do it really well. Um, a very dark action film. I, I think that he would be fantastic at that. And I really hope that one day we do get it. But as it stands right now, this is all we know about the project. So if we do get any more on David Fincher's upcoming Gone Girl, I will definitely update you guys on here. All right, and so the next story that we have to talk about is actually a pretty intriguing one. I did not know that uh, that Kevin Smith was as close with J.J. Abrams as he actually is. J.J. Um, Abrams actually sent Kevin Smith an email about three or four weeks ago while they were still filming in Abu Dhabi. And uh, he asked him if he was ever going to be in town, if he was going to be in London, if he was going to be in the area uh, to stop on by the set. And he said absolutely. He was going to be doing a couple of shows in a couple of weeks there, which just happened last week. And uh, and so then he was invited onto the set, and he had to sign a non-disclosure agreement, which is that's standard. Um, so he unfortunately could not talk about any specifics, but he was able to talk around that. And a couple of things that he said are really going to make a lot of people, I think, very happy. Um, one of the things that he talked about was how it's a tactile world. J.J. Abrams is building a tactile world that you can touch, that you can interact with. Not wall-to-wall -wall green screens where it's just people standing on a floor and, and using their imagination to, to try to create everything. No, they actually have things that they can rely on, that they can uh, interact with. There's explosions going on in the sets. Um, he, when he actually went there, they were actually shooting. Um, he actually went in between a take, but they were actually in the midst of shooting. Um, and he couldn't talk about, you know, who he had seen or what he had seen or anything like that, but he, he goes around and says, um, you know, I got to see uniforms that I have not seen since I was a child. I got to see artillery that I have not seen since I was a kid. Um, he, uh, <clears throat> what were some of the other things that he said? Um, you know, he, he, got to, he got to experience something that he had never experienced in his life. And this is Kevin Smith. This is a guy who, uh, for all the people who just don't like Kevin Smith, which I personally do, but I can understand how people might not like him. Um, someone as big and engraved in pop culture as Kevin Smith and someone who loves Star Wars as much, coming onto the set and only taking one photograph after he's done, and the photograph being him holding his thumb up and holding back, crying, like he was actually crying, because he was so happy, he his his childhood dream had been relived. The fact that he got to, he even said that, you know, he got to see people who he grew up with, not actual people he grew up with, but he, I mean, he's meaning he he was probably there on set uh, a time when either uh, Mark Mark Hamill was filming, or when Carrie Fisher was filming, or if Chewie or C three PO or R two D two, if one of the original trilogy stars was there. That's what he was implying. So, I mean, the, the fact that not only was he a lucky bastard and got to go to the damn set, um, the fact that he got to walk around, and even J.J. Abrams said, <clears throat> uh, hey, when we're done here, take take Kevin over to, to uh, Studio B. Or, no, um, M, M, sorry, uh, Stage M. 
And Kevin Smith goes, ooh, because he knows what's in stage M. And that's why he could talk about this one specific spot because it's already been unveiled and it's in the film. Um, but he got to go over to the soundstage where they were building and shooting on the Millennium Falcon. Um, I don't think they filmed any sequences on it yet, or, or sorry, yeah, they, they have at least filmed one sequence on it, that's how Harrison Ford was injured, but the outside of it was a set. He said it looked like a movie set, but as soon as you walked in, it was fully reconstructed on the inside. You could walk around it, you could interact with everything. Um, one of the intriguing parts that I didn't even actually know was um, the Millennium Falcon was redesigned slightly for Empire Strikes Back from the first Star Wars movie, and they actually made the cockpit larger and I, I mean visually you can't even notice it like they did such a good job with that and with camera angles and, and all that stuff but um, what they've done is they've now actually combined those two and so they've they've met somewhere in the middle I guess the cockpit's not as big as it was in number two but it's bigger than it was in number one small little detail but I mean that that's just interesting to me you know I mean the the fact that they do minor minor changes just like what I talked about on uh, on last week's episode about the Superman suit you know just minor minor changes that to to the regular person watching they're not going to notice it but to the people who actually delve into this stuff and really look into it it means a lot more and and just knowing that they are at least adhering to what was done in the past they're not redesigning it in a sense or updating it they're keeping it the exact same way that it was the way that we know it, the way that we love it, and just bringing it to a new audience. And I, I, you have to admire J.J. Abrams for, for doing something like that. Um, and then, and once he was done, even on that set, he went uh, back over to where J.J. Abrams was on that stage, and they they had finished filming, I guess, for for a bit. They had to do another setup. So J.J. took him into another room and showed him some sequences from the film. Clearly, no special effects had been done, but you could get a sense of what was going on and after he was finished showing being shown that sequence he turned to JJ Abrams tear coming down his eye and hugged him and he 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 just he had to congratulate him about what he has done for not only just for this franchise but what he has done for fanboys of this franchise and people who really care because to a lot of people Star Wars is more than a movie there are a lot of people out there where Star Wars is much more than a movie, and it's much more than collectibles and, and all this. It's part of their life. And I know that might sound stupid to some people, but you really have to take into consideration what that movie did. There was nothing like it before. Before Star Wars came out, there was nothing out there like it. And it changed cinema. It changed people's lives. It really did. And I know a lot of people say, well, that's just stupid. It's a movie. Like, it's, it's made up. It's fake. Yes, that's fine. It changed people's lives. And the fact that when, J or when George Lucas came back with the prequel trilogy, the only thing that was similar was the fact that it had to deal with Jedi, there were lightsabers, and uh, it was set in space. And it was called Star Wars. That, those were the only similarities between the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. Prequel trilogy still had its exciting moments. But it wasn't Star Wars. And from what we've gathered, from what Kevin Smith has said, J.J. Abrams is bringing back Star Wars. He is bringing it back to us the way that we know it, the way that we've always wanted it. And you have to really commend him for that. And I, I, I am, like, I, it, it's still a ways away. It's still a year and a half out. I don't think we're going to get anything at Comic-Con. Uh, at least in terms of footage, we'll probably get some some other announcements. Maybe who's what the title of the movie is, or what some of the characters are playing. But we're not really going to get anything. Maybe the first official photo released from the set of John Boyega holding the lightsaber, you know, or uh, or Adam Driver dressed up like a Sith, you know, because we, we still don't know. But those are the high speculations that that's going to happen. Adam Driver is either going to start off bad or he's going to become bad. Um, that's the the speculation right now. But uh, another little thing on top of this as well was they've actually announced they are going to be taking a two-week break from filming. Uh, it may have originally been planned, but this looks like it's to allow for them to not have to figure out a schedule to work around with Harrison Ford's injury to give him another two weeks where they can plan out a couple other things, give some people a little bit of a break, let them go home for a bit, um, and then when the two weeks are done, come back and start shooting Han Solo scenes again. That seems very likely, because again, it's been about three weeks now that uh, that Harrison Ford's been out. 
Um, so, I mean, originally they said it was going to be about six to eight weeks. And I, I said that I thought it was more likely to be four to six. They were going to really try to push it. Um, and even though he was going to still have to be doing his rehab, they were going to shoot a lot of the scenes where he was sitting down or where he was behind something where they could have him like, like standing on one leg instead of the other one where you couldn't notice it. That's what I feel is going to happen. So two weeks and then when that finishes, then they're going to get Harrison Ford to come back. That's what I think is going to happen. And even more Star Wars news. We have two more additional casting announcements. These two uh, new actors are fresh off the boat. They've never really done anything. Um, uh, the one guy, I, think, I believe his name is Kip, um, he has actually done a commercial for, oh, it was a cola. I think it was Pepsi or Coke or something like that. But he is a parkour uh, enthusiast and he knows a lot of parkour so right there you know that he's either going to be a Sith or a Jedi most likely a Jedi because he's going to be able to do the flips he's going to need to be able to do all that kind of stuff and he's I don't think he's gonna have a big role I think he's just cast as one of the Jedi who are gonna have speaking lines um, but the other character we have no idea who she's playing both of these are probably gonna be smaller roles um, but uh, but as it stands right now this is all the information, or all the new information, I should say, that we have on Star Wars. So if we get any more information, I will definitely update you guys on here. And the next topic we have to talk about is in regards to Ant-Man. So we got another little bit of negativity in the background when it comes to Ant-Man. So again, we have new writers that are hired on to revise the last version that was done by Adam McKay who was the last writer that was brought on. Um, the one gleam of hope with this is they've been brought on as production writers. Now, production writers are people who will be on set through the majority of filming, and they will be there to do minor rewrites as, it need, as need be on the day in question. Or potentially they could come up and say, hey, listen, you know, we've, we've got this great idea. Can we write a scene in and do it next week? Um, you know, they <clears throat> and just have a, a continuation of that scene or say, hey, you know what, this isn't working in this segment, let's move it to that segment. And so then they'll say, okay, they'll, they'll take that out, they'll rewrite something in there so they can finish that shot and then work in something for that next scene. You know, they could do stuff like that. So I'm not overly worried. Uh, as, from what they've said, there's, uh, there's no delay on the release date. They are still trudging ahead for July 17th, 2015. Filming is still expected to start in August. Um, so, I mean, they, they still have a couple of weeks to get up and running. Now, if, if they were still going ahead, that means the script they have is pretty much done. They just have little tweaks here and there that they need to make, and they can do that on set, on the day. It's not going to be bringing up another set piece. It's not going to be changing location or changing the name of a character or anything like that or bringing in a new character. It's going to be updating the dialogue that's being said, maybe tightening up certain scenes that have gone on a little too long. Uh, you know, little, little revisions like that. That's what they're going to be doing. So, I mean, with, with this, I'm a little bit more comfortable with this, but I want them to actually start rolling the cameras. I want to start actually seeing some pictures so that we know that this film is actually happening and it has not fully collapsed under its own weight, which could be very likely. We just... I, mm, no, I, I, I think, I think this movie is going to be, going to be on track. I think this is the last major change that we're going to see. <clears throat> we're not going to see any of the actors leave because they're under contract. They can leave if they wanted to. Um, so I, I mean, you know, we, we get, we get the little script rewrites and that's it. But I, I think that if you were to have Adam McKay's version and then watch the finished film, there's not going to be all that many changes. It's going to be a little tightening here and there. That's all that it's going to be. At least that's what I'm speculating. Because they're just they're brought on as as production writers. So yeah, I, I don't see them making overly large changes. There's just going to be minor ones. Um, but if we get more information about this project or we get the first official still or anything of that sort, I'll definitely update you guys on here. And the last topic we have to talk about today is it's still a rumor because he hasn't signed on to the dotted line, but it's a very intriguing one because this project has been in limbo for years and years and years. Um, it's looking likely that Mark Wahlberg will actually be the new $6 million man. Um, it, it, again, it's still listed as a rumor. Peter Berg, the guy who's directed Lone Survivor and The Rundown and Battleship, um, he is producing this new version of this film. 
and the rumor is is that he's actually going to be bringing on Mark Wahlberg and that Mark Wahlberg is all but signed on the dotted line for this new project. And I think Harvey Weinstein is also involved in some capacity as a producer as well. Um, it's just very interesting that this project is picking up steam again because Jim Carrey was long connected with this project for oh, several years uh, and before it, it fell apart in the mid-2000s. Um, he yeah it, like he he was involved with a lot of projects actually that that ended up falling apart like Three Stooges and and uh, and Six Million Dollar Man but there there were a couple other people like I I think Brian Singer at one point uh, attempted to do one but it was very minor he's got a lot of other projects he's been trying to get Logan's Run done for years and years and years um, funny story actually with Logan's Run he had uh, he almost had a, a deal with Fox because Fox was the ones who own uh, as far as I'm aware it's Fox it's either Fox or Warner Brothers. Um, but I think it was Fox because he had a deal where if through his X-Men deal, he did X-Men 1, X-Men 2, he was supposed to come back to do X-Men 3 and once he was finished with X with the X-Men 3 film, he was then going to siege into doing his remake of Logan's Run and well, we all know what happened with X-Men 3, Brian Singer, he, att he, he attempted to go with the Fox executives to say, hey listen, I still very, very heavily want to do X-Men 3, I still have a great idea for it, but I really want to do this Superman film with Warner Brothers, and we're gearing up to do that, we've already got the script written, we've got, you know, we're starting to get casting underway, and Warner, or 20th Century Fox basically came back and said, no, we're, we're staying on track to have the movie released in 2006, and he said, well, I can't make that date because that's when my Superman movie's coming out, so they said, okay, well, bye-bye, you know, you're done. And uh, also about that Logan's Run movie that you were going to do, yeah, that's not happening either. Um, it, it was really kind of sad because I feel that he could have really done something unique with that. And Logan's Run is a story, even though updated versions of it have been told in the past, it really does need to be remade because the story of Logan's Run has been told. But Logan's Run itself has not been remade. The, the, the totalitarian government uh, side of it, the, the futuristic landscapes, you know, all, all this kind of stuff we haven't seen a true Logan's Run remake and when he left that he then had an idea of doing Battlestar Galactica and he tried for years to get Battlestar Galactica happening we all know now that, that there is a new Battlestar Galactica that is happening and as far as I'm aware he's not involved with it because he's too busy dealing with X-Men right now again which is funny it all comes back around full circle but uh, getting back to the six million dollar man thing they're gonna have to change the title for sure, because a six million dollar man is not going to be all that impressive nowadays, considering what everything costs. Um, he would have to be the six billion dollar man for him to really be, um, for for him to really have a franchise potential around him. Because six million dollar man back then was just he had bionic arms, bionic legs, so he could run really fast and he could jump really high. Nowadays, with something like a six million dollar man, you know that it's basically going to be a movie version of the TV show Intelligence where he's going to have a chip in his head, he's going to be able to access cameras, he's going to be able to access the internet, he's going to have super strength, super speed, um, they're probably going to have something in him which causes him to not be dealt a lot of damage. Um, you know, so technology like that is, or maybe the $600 million man, or something like that. They're going to have to change the title. Maybe even just put a question mark. $6 million man? Really? He's a lot more than that. But, um, but yeah, Mark Wahlberg still has not signed on to the dotted line yet, so we don't have official confirmation that he is involved. But we do know that this project is now picking up steam, which means we should be hearing some uh, official announcements on this relatively soon. I'd say within the next couple of weeks, we should hear something about this. But when we do hear something about it, I will definitely update you guys on here. Well, that'll about do it for us here on Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have been a great audience. You can uh, go ahead and click the subscribe button there. You can get updates whenever we post a new video. You can also access our Facebook page at facebook.com slash movie news with Nicholson to start a discussion or ask any sort of questions that you might have about the films uh, that we talk about or any other topics you would like to discuss. You can also follow me on Twitter at Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N, to get all your updates on movie information. And you can also, if you have a question or a topic that you would like to have discussed on the show at any time, uh, you can go ahead and submit your question on our website at movienewswithnicholson.ca. On that website, there's going to be a contact section, and in there you can submit any questions that you have, and every Friday, along with a major review, I will be doing our user-submitted questions. So definitely, if you guys have anything you want to talk about, put a question on there, or even just put a comment in the comment section. But until next time, this has been Nicholson. Thank you so much for watching, and you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.